Hello, I'm Hunter Schultz, and welcome to the show. Last week, I interviewed Carl Schusler Jr. from Mitigate Partners. Carl and I see eye to eye on a lot of things, especially saving more healthcare coverage dollars while getting far better care. Getting people to even consider other coverage possibilities was a big problem until recently, such as the grip insurance companies have on healthcare dollars. But some recent news I've received says they're worried. The game has changed. Everyone is looking at every single expense with laser precision. COVID-19 is a gut punch wake up call. I clean that up. When recording last week's show, I asked Carl about what his clients heard to make them change to the fair cost health plan. Mind you, all this was before COVID-19's gut punch. His answer, starting right now. I would say this. Most of the time, Hunter, it's been the pain is great enough. Now we got to change. COVID-19's got many people to that point. Obviously, these were pre-COVID-19. That's the school district. They're in tough shape financially. This should be the first year they will operate without a deficit on their health plan. Now, we haven't done everything we want to do yet. We haven't got, hadn't fair costed it and everything yet else yet, but we've done a few things with some solutions you know about. Green Imaging, tremendous partner, Dr. Kristen Dickerson in Houston, saved, uh, we're projected to save 1.3 million on imaging costs, which is, that's a lot of increased teacher salaries. Um, They're 67th in most categories in the state of Florida. Wow. The, the, the pain is there. We got to change. We can't keep going. So that's one. Um, the hotel, I'm just going through the videos, not, not all the rest, just the video people, the video clients. The hotel, you had a, 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 a unbelievably smart and just really incredibly gifted communicators, I say, and a lot of CFOs aren't. So Glenn, if you're listening, um, but Glenn Price uh, had a lot, had everything to do with this. And when we met, and this is Hunter. I'm sorry. This is a diversion, but it's a funny story. So, I, we were down at the at the island for vacation, and it was a special place to us. And this was back in '14. I said, "Missy, I'm gonna go get a meeting with the, with the, with the Gasparill Inn." And I was able to finagle a meeting. So I met with Glenn, and I walked in. And Hunter, I said, "Listen, um, people by differences, not similarities. I got to do something different." So I went in with a visor smelled reeked of uh, sunscreen, fishing shorts, a fishing shirt, and flip-flops. And I sat down with him and he'll, he'll tell you, I sat down with him and he goes, all right, what do you got to sell me? And I'm like, oh no, this is going to be fun. So I, I, I said, well, I pride myself on being different. How am I doing so far? And he said, well, no one's coming dressed like that. And I said, I'll take it. And, uh, and then we had a good meet. Next time I went in with some nice golf shorts and a golf shirt about two days later, and we went through it. And he sort of suspected all this stuff was going on as we went through this, all the flaws and, and the system. And as we pointed it out, and we pointed out how he could not get his data, and he should have been able to by the laws in the state of Florida. But when the insurance company was called, and this is what they said, I'm not, again, won't say who, uh, it can be found out there because there's some articles, but I'll never forget the person I called said, Hey, I've I've got state statute, blah, 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 blah. My client deserves a loss ratio. The client had never seen a loss ratio in their history ever. And that carrier rep said, Carl, we're instructed by the management, you know, the people with doors, you know, they have offices to never give that information out unless someone produces the state statute. Wow. That's what we're fighting at right there. That is absolutely wrong. And that's the kind of stuff that's being done all over America. So anyway, we got it all. We started going through it and he saw, he, he suspected, Hey, we're, we're running great. 65% loss rates. They're making a lot of money on us and their stock price is up here and we're getting killed. So 15% increases. So that was to the point where he wanted to make a change. 
uh, I wouldn't say the pain was great enough. I think Glenn absorbed, listened, saw what he thought come true, and he made that decision. The hospital was a little different, and I don't know if you want to go through each one, but the hospital was a little different. It took a while. We met on um, Thanksgiving of 17, had several meetings over 2018, got hired August of 18. But what you run into in these things, Hunter, always is relationship. These brokers, it, it, it blows me away, and I used that example yesterday. If uh, you and I are in business and I had, you had a non-compete with me and I left you and took all the clients and your non-compete didn't work in court, are you going to call your lawyer and tell them everything they did wrong? Or are you going to call your lawyer and say, have a nice day. See you later. And uh, you're fired and you're going to work with a new lawyer. In our world, that ain't how it works. I, I, I don't be, it's beyond me of why somebody puts stock in someone that slogs insurance around. No offense to people that do, but they're not doing anything else, but quoting all the carriers and bringing them to the table. So the relationship is a big part to overcome. And that was the biggest struggle at the hospital to overcome that. But everyone saw it. They got behind it. And eventually we did Dr. Gross. He gets a ton of credit because he was there helping push it through as well. So um, somehow, you know, we didn't irrit irritate them and, uh, and bother them. So they agreed to work with us. But I don't know if I answered those questions. I think you yes. have to educate the client because the pain's not great enough. Hunter, before COVID-19, people were blowing and going, fat, dumb, and happy. And then, hey, Carl, I believe we could save, and you're talking about making, increasing my EBITDA by two times by saving this money. We operate on a 5% 5, 5 profit margin, and this goes right to our bottom line. Financially, this is great. But, hey, Hunter and all my key employees are happy. We don't want to do that right now. They're changing their tune right now. So yeah. I don't think there's ever been a greater time to be a benefits advisor, I, I agree. Dave Chase wrote a great article years ago. I think the benefit advisor is one of the most critical jobs in America right now to help fix this healthcare system. And it's a, a it's upon us. And one of the things that I say that mitigate partners, and I, I don't know what verbatim, I'm going to read it to you. Mitigate partners are committed to pushing our clients out of their comfort zone to bring different solutions, to deliver different results, and not to accept the status quo, even if it's what that client knowingly or unknowingly is asking for. Um, we relentlessly pursue both personally and professionally uh, opportunities to share, collaborate, learn, and how to constantly improve the situation of our clients and their employees. And that's what we do. And we advise different. Hunter. A lot of people will tell you, I've had numerous people say, Carl, this fair cost health plan is unbelievable. Why don't you just put one solution a year in for your client and you can keep them forever? And I'm going, well, let me ask you something, Hunter. If you knew you could save $5 million today versus a million, wouldn't you want to know about that? And the fear is we're going to lose the sale because we might confuse them. But you got to show people what the promised land looks like. And if they don't want to go there, you can walk them back. But I want to know if I can save $5 million, don't you? And I don't know who made the benefits advisor guide to decide to make those decisions. But that's what an advisor is supposed to do. That's the difference between an advisor and a broker. You're With brokers, you're pushing a rope. With advisors, I tell everyone, if anybody's seen the Great Outdoors movie with John Candy, God bless his soul, and Dan Aykroyd, if you remember when he was on that boat, uh, you know, that uh, Dan Aykroyd, I think his name was, was it Raymond in there? He got that fancy jet boat, and, and John Candy was behind it, and it looked like he knew what he was doing, and he, all of a sudden, he's barefoot skin going over ramps and all over. So when I tell you, when, when you work with a mitigate partner, you better grab them on for dear life. It was going to jerk you all over the lake versus you, you know, pushing the rope to get the boat moving, and that's the difference. So mitigate partners, you, you, you're the founder of it. I'm a co-founder co -founder. with, with, my, with uh, Barry Murphy and also Barry Broom. And you also, I'm going to have a link to it, obviously, but you, you've grown this over the years. When did you start that? Really, it, 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 it probably got active a year, year and a half ago, I would say. And really what it is, just to be clear, these are all independent business owners, these mm -hmm. benefit advisors. No one, uh, we don't own anybody, but we come together to share and collaborate. Like the Health Rosetta is, it's just a more formalized group of some people that have met, gotten along, and are just helping each other, just like the Health Rosetta does. Um, and they're given access to some of our intellectual property and the Fair Cost Health Plan. And so um, it's a pretty loose license agreement, if you will. 
but um, it's about a year and a half and there's now, we just added somebody on the panhandle. So we got about 20 offices. Um, and most of these people, if we're, we're not all working together, they're doing whatever they do and, and having successes on their own. And I, I wanted to help mentor people to give back to, because Barry Murphy, who, again, who started this with me was my mentor out of, out of college. And as I, as he says now, and he's Barry's right at about 70, he said, now Carl's mentoring me, um, you know, the child <laughs> becomes the parent. Um, but um, as we went down this journey, Hunter, there's a real simple statement, and I and I, I, I didn't say it at our first annual Mitigate Partner Summit back on June 9th at, at, at Gasparilla Inn. Smart people learn from their mistake, mistakes. Wise people learn from the mistakes of others. People need to be wise. Don't go out and do what we did for seven years. Uh, take it and use it and make it better but learn and that's what this is about it's about helping each other and the other part is from all the we've been very blessed and asked to speak a lot um and we, we don't we don't have a pr firm we don't advertise we've just been very blessed and i don't know why these people keep asking it's like this podcast you're like man i made a big mistake bringing this 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 blowhole on the on the podcast but not at all the, yeah um but but these um there's opportunities that have come up um, we spoke at the ortho forum. We had 15 or so orthopedic practices that want to talk to us. We were talking to them about our talk. It was twofold, how to, how to direct contract and then how to make your own benefit plan better. So it was twofold mm -hmm. and there are opportunities in these markets. So the local management part of mitigate partners. So Hunter Schultz is in Panama and there's a, a prospect in Panama. Hunter will be the local management because he's the local boots on the ground. And we'll co-advise, work together, and help. So that's really, really, it was a give back and to mentor and help people because we could do a lot of these cases ourselves, Hunter, but I don't want to do that. I want to help grow it, replicate, and get people, unclip their wings where they can fly off and do it all themselves because that's what I think this, this is about. And that's how we're going to change healthcare. If we try to hoard it and keep it all to ourselves, we can't do anything. So I think it's a collaborative effort. And Dave Chase, Health Rosetta, gets a ton of credit for the things they've done and has yes. kind of created this open venue. And again, in an industry that was competitive as heck, never was collaborative. Yeah. So they get a lot of credit. For that. You, you mentioned something um, where I've, I've seen this. Um, there are communities out there that are struggling uh, I see this as an opportunity for communities, whether it's businesses and school boards and that. I think this is a terrific opportunity for them to develop a, uh, develop a plan that makes their community a heck of a lot more attractive to move and grow a business, uh, raise kids, even retire. Uh, that's what I see, and, I, and I'm glad that you, you were able to uh, join me today. One of the things that popped into my head as you were talking over this show is if I'm an employee and I see this or I see something that, that something about fair cost, is there anything that you suggest they do, uh, you know, to go up to their boss and say, hey, you know, boss, I'm spending a lot of money on healthcare because now everyone's a consumer, whether they like it or not. What do you suggest for the employee that, that goes, the light goes on and says, Hey, we could save our company a lot of money. What would you su suggest to that employee that they show their boss, whether it's a link, it doesn't have to be to this show. I'm just saying maybe it's a, what kind of tool do you suggest they use? Hey, boss, we need to look at this. Is it out of bounds to maybe share a screen with you? No, go right ahead. Go this ahead. is what this is, Hunter. This is what I'd have that employee show their employer. And this is something that I, I, I believe, you know, if we look back, that Dave Chase probably coined it, but you can have, you know, eight times the benefits for half the cost or 10 times the benefits. And you, I can prove to you that Gasparilla has 20 times the benefits for 33% of the cost. <laughs> 
So um, this is this is actually their L plan. So here's what I'd show them. All right, you're going to look at fair cost versus other health plans. You check out the that's the average deductible across America right now on the right. Zero, zero for generic drugs. Brand name. MRI CT scan copay. Pathologies thousands of dollars when they do those things, and and that is not that's remember pathologists are not in your network. They're separate. So that's a balanced bill, surprise medical bill that many em, 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 employees encounter out there. Um, Fifteen to twenty-five dollar copays. Hunter, we you hadn't seen stuff like this in thirty years. The plans like this haven't existed. Um, outpatient, inpatient. We just asked for an admission copay. It's money, but it's not three thousand dollars. Right. And then the coinsurance is one hundred percent. Um, the out-of-pocket maximum on our programs for this particular one, you'd have to take 50 drugs a month to hit the out-of-pocket max. That's the only way you could ever do it. And wow. a lot of the drugs are free. <laughs> so, um, and that's what the employee pays in this particular example. Obviously, the employer subsidizes it, but they were able to save so much money over the years. And that includes dental and vision. Including then, dental vision. Yeah. Holy and then, and then, then a couple of critical benchmarks you heard me talk about, the medical expense per employee per year nationally is 12125 We're at 3000 What and, can you do with that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Drug expense per member per month, national average 100 We were in the, in the mid-40s. Some groups were in the mid-50s. Um, yeah, Hunter, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not like my friend Barry Murphy who went to Georgia Tech, so I'm not real good with math, but I can figure that out pretty good. You got 200 employees, you got a thousand employees, you got 7,000 employees. Now I can't promise that we can get you to this every time, but we can get you around 4,500. I feel very comfortably. And um, by actively managing your plan it's absolutely possible. And I want to say that you could save anywhere from 20 to 60%. And I know everybody, you should never say that, that people think you're trying to sell something and you're full of bull. We got proof. Yeah, that's a big difference. I mean, that is a huge difference So that this can be done. I think one of the most important aspects of what we've talked about today is, again, the fact that this is being done. One of my favorite sayings my, dad's, my dad used in, in his talks, and that was, man who say it cannot be done should not interrupt man doing it. And he attributed, he attributed that to Confucius. And it's sort of like when I started this show, it was ready, fire, aim. I really didn't know where I was going. But uh, it's evolved now into DPC Sherpas, which I hadn't even thought of back then in November when I started. But I'm, I'm thinking that what you've done is essentially like Sir Edmund Hillary. He climbed Mount Everest with his Sherpa uh, and made it to the top. And all the climbers, everyone in the world went, wow, that's amazing. Because most people looked and went, oof, that's rough <laughs> before him. But I think the second ascent was even more important because it proved it could be replicated. And you're doing something really unique. You've sort of like, you're Sir Edmund Hillary. And then you went, by God, let's do it again. <laughs> so you proved it could be done. It's replicable, and that's so important. So I, I, my, my uh, sincere thanks for doing that. And I know you had help, and I know you had, uh, it's your team, if you will. And Dave Chase and a lot of others have been in, involved in this. So there's a group of you that went up the mountain, and then you went right back up again after coming back down and said, yeah, we can do this. It's not a one-time thing. This isn't just a, you know, a, it isn't lucky. It's just preparation and hard work and you did it. And, and I commend you for that and your team. And thank you. Yeah. Uh, Hunter, I know this is one of your favorite quotes I saw on your stuff too. And this is really what drove us when you say deconstruct the system, unbundle and rebuild it. That's what happened. We, we, the existing reality wasn't working. And we had to build something new and that made the existing model obsolete. And that's really what drove, as I shared with you earlier in the show, what drove it. Um, 
But this is a, a, a ship that, that Rosetta has used. We've used building blocks before, but this is really what it's about. It's employer built healthcare. And I thought, Hunter, this would be a good visual for the folks that are uh, listening or viewing to see. And this is it. And there is your value based direct primary care at the bottom. These are the components that go into a health plan. And Hunter, we cut this way back. We'd, go we'd have to have three slides to show all the building blocks. But that essentially is what we're talking about. And that is the Buckminster Fuller quote. We tore it down. The reality wasn't good and we created a new model that made the other one obsolete. And that's what this has accomplished, we feel. And again, always try and improve. It isn't perfect, it's far from it. It's not always the easy button, but uh, the results, I mean, I, I, I mean, they just speak for themselves. And I tell you, I'm touched and, and uh, uh, tear up at times when we look at um, one of our employees in one of the videos was invited to meet the president in Orlando at the HEMS conference. The HEMS conference, as you know, is the first one COVID-19 canceled. 40,000 people were uh, people gonna uh, res, uh, come on to Orlando. And, um, you know, they talked with the White House numerous times. That's, ama that's amazing that patient rights advocate, again, has done so much to promote this to Secretary Alex Azar, HHS Secretary Azar, and the White House, and Dr. Gross, Dr. Ayai, Dr. Purcell, I could go down the list. Shane's unbelievable, and I, and I should have said more about Shane today, but these people are helping push this, and it is an uphill battle. I fought in Georgia under the gold dome. Heck, I, I mean, I didn't want to go into that, but then I'm going out with a, a great fellow that's the head of health, uh, director, director of health for the Texas Public Policy Foundation, David Blatt. I'm going to speak at the Texas legislature, and I can't even get my own state to listen to me. And then we've been doing some things in Florida, pushing legislation forward with great folks like Don Butterfield and Pharmacists United for Truth and Transparency. HB 961, the middle of December, we had held a show at a local pharmacy. We spoke for like a minute and a half and six legislatures for this in the state house and Senate came together and pushed it. Well, it got killed in committee because the cartel won. But these things that we're doing, it's, it's, it's exhausting. But I do think this, Hunter, I think they can, people can keep fighting nationally. And what I learned, and I shared with you yet, uh, the other day when we spoke, I tried to boil the ocean and it didn't work well for me. Um, I think we have to boil the creeks, boil the rivers, boil the lakes, then we boil the ocean. We've got folks trying to boil the ocean. We can do our grassroots part here and change this healthcare system one employer at a time. And these stories, as they collectively are shared amongst us all, every time one of us speaks on a stage, every time one of us is on a great show like yours, we are all helping each other. That's what this is about. And as the collective, I think we can hopefully get there. If not, I'm not going to have a great retirement. At some point. I'm moving to Panama. But you've told me so many great things. I'm out of here. When Carl said he tried boiling the ocean, he meant Washington, D.C. He learned from that experience that he'd be more successful boiling creeks, rivers, and streams, and lakes. But that takes courageous employers and, as Carl said, the right advisor to keep you from getting hung out to dry. Yes, it may seem like a tall order, but there was a time when the crowd and experts said Mount Everest was unclimbable. Now there's a litter problem on the mountain. So if you're an employer, employee, benefits manager, or taxpayer, this show is one worth sharing. I'd also suggest checking out Dr. Shane Purcell's book, Magic, Pixie Dust, and Miracles. It's a roadmap of real-world experience to get it done. The good news? There's no excuse now. Employees can have far better care and coverage at way less cost. The only things standing in the way are the naysayers and lazy thinkers. Now you know what you can do. For winning healthcare food fights without the mess, I'm Hunter Schultz. Stay healthy, wash your hands a lot, and there you are.